At Farnborough, the Society of British Aircraft Constructors' annual display adds once more to its worldwide reputation. 1953 was a year of consolidation with emphasis on production models rather than prototypes, and above all, it showed the British industry's capacity and determination to export. sequences and the civil types. First the Vickers Viscount, the world's first turboprop airliner. Familiar now to all air travelers in Western Europe where it's in regular service. And the helicopters. Here's the Bristol 173 or rotocoach with twin engines. The pilots demonstrating its ability to use small enclosed spaces. This year the 173 appears in new form with small stub wings which take 30% of the load off the rotors. The Auster Aiglet, the light aircraft par excellence. Cheap to buy and the sort of aircraft which is popular with farmer and businessman. This model has dual controls for training. Comet put commercial jet propulsion on the map. The Comet 2, seen here, has more powerful engines and a greater range than the earlier model. It carries 44 passengers on stage lengths of over 2,000 miles and will soon be taking the South Atlantic in its stride. This large new freighter, the Blackburn Beverly, may look cumbersome in the air, but it carries over 20 tons of freight and can operate from small airfields with grass runways. It's on order for the Air Force and commercial types are also being developed. Here the Beverly is using her propellers to back to the unloading point. The Princess flying boat, making a slow speed fly past over the runway, is fitted with turboprop engines of the same basic type as those in the Britannia. The Britannia itself is now fitted with the new Proteus III engines. It can carry a hundred passengers in solid comfort over very long ranges. More important still, Operation costs are particularly low. As the Britannia is brought into land, you get a glimpse inside the control tower. For these controllers, handling aircraft with speeds varying from 100 to 700 miles an hour is a day-by-day -day achievement, and a very responsible job it is. Olympus, Canberra, taxi on over. Now let's turn to military and research types. Since the Canberra became the first British jet bomber to fly, she's added quite a string of firsts and records to her name. Here in a particularly spectacular climb is the Olympus Canberra, which holds the world's height record, 63,668 feet. The Canberra's being built in the United States and Australia, as well as in Great Britain, and she's also in service with the Venezuelan Air Force. The DH-110 is under development for the Royal Navy. Although not a newcomer to Farnborough, it's worth noting the maneuverability of this two-seater aeroplane, which has beaten the sound barrier with no trouble at all on numerous occasions.
As a contrast, the short sea mule, also in production for the Navy. A turboprop anti-submarine aircraft which can take off and land from small escort carriers. In the purely research class, the SB-5, a product of the same firm, is designed to test performance with the wings swept at varying angles. Here they're set at 60 degrees, but they can be moved back still further to 69 degrees. The position of the tail is also adjustable. Another research aircraft, the Bolton Paul 111A, a very fast little delta wing type. Head on, it has a rather grim appearance. Among the fighters on show is the two-seater radar-carrying Gloucester Javelin. demonstrates its astonishing rate of climb. The Javelin, in super priority production for the RAF, has the Delta Wing, which makes it extremely maneuverable at both high and low altitudes. It's powered by two Sapphire engines. Supermarine Swifts take off. and firepower, the Swifts are important newcomers to the fighter strength of Western Europe, and that's probably the impression formed by General Grunter, Supreme Commander of Shape. The Hawker Hunter has broken some important world speed records, and here's test pilot Neville Duke with his record-breaking machine in a slow flypast over fun. Swift is in super priority production for the RAF and it's also been built under license in Holland and Belgium. She too can fly at supersonic speeds. That's one of the shock clouds characteristic of sonic flight. Now Wait for it. The Handy Page Victor, another new aircraft on show at Farnborough for the first time, is Britain's latest V bomber to go into production. crescent or scimitar wings, which its designers claim share the advantages of the delta and swept wings, thereby producing good high altitude performance and easy landing.
Lotus Valiant was the second V bomber on show. This is the Mark II variant. the third V bomber, the Vulcan. The Vulcan, the world's first Delta Wing bomber, is in production for the Royal Air Force. we see the first two Vulcans taking the air. in formation with the small experimental Avro 707s from which they were developed, they passed majestically by, bringing to a close the display of this year's aircraft. But progress continues, bringing to Britain greater prosperity and security in this jet age.